Good morning. Good morning, loves. Welcome to Bookie Monsters. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Appreciate you being here. My name is PK. And on the morning show, we look at the new releases of each week, each day of this week, a different genre each day. Today, we're going to be looking at romance. Uh, some announcements. Let's see. I don't have sprints tonight. Sarah does on the Bookish Knitter. If you want to do any, they start at 7 p.m. Eastern time. If you want to tune into that, again, Bookish Knitter. Uh, I have sprints tomorrow night at 6.05 Mountain Time, 8.05 Eastern. And that will go for two and a half hours. Um, so let's jump into this. Let me get rid of this banner. And I have a sneeze that wants to happen here. We'll see if it does anything. Okay, let's go to here. All right, let's see, what is today? Today is Wednesday, October the 11th. Goodness. Okay, I don't think we looked at this one last week because it was so close to today. This one apparently came out yesterday. It's Kindle Unlimited. If you like your, looks like your hockey romances, it says, fuck yes, by Lauren Blakely, second in the series. The hotshot new hockey player, the veteran team captain, and the woman they fall for when she becomes the new team mascot in a fake marriage hockey rom-com. When my ex trades me out for a better model, my boss, I don't take getting screwed over lying down. Instead, I get a glow up, not only landing a new job with a hockey team, but also scoring the city's hot new hockey player as my plus one to my ex's wedding. Then the sexy team captain starts flirting with me too. But one night after a win, I accidentally marry that intense new guy after the captain dares us to say, I do. One dare leads to another and I'm experiencing double the pleasure as I say, fuck yes to both players sharing me on my wedding night. Oh, it's one of those. Well, I kind of had a hint of it. In the morning, when hubby and I are on our way to get an annulment, the team owner spots our rings and invites the new it couple to attend her upcoming charity golf tournament. Looks like I have to fake it as Mrs. Hockey for the hockey season and the wedding season. There's only one problem. We're not just a couple. Both guys want more of me. And pretty soon, I've got a bigger problem. I'm falling for my fake husband and my secret boyfriend at the same time. That is a conundrum. That's the thing about uh, romance. It runs the gamut of very, very sweet to the other end of the spectrum. Good morning, Mary. Good morning. Happy Wednesday. Hope you're feeling good. I have a cup of something warm on this fall day. Better Hate Than Never by Chloe Leese, second in the Wilmot Sisters series. Ch -ch -ch. Childhood enemies discover the fine line between love and loathing in this heartfelt reimagining of Shakespeare's The Taming of the Shrew. Katerina Wilmot and Christopher Petruchio, couldn't even come up with different names, shared backyards as kids, but as adults, they won't even share the same hemisphere. That is until Kate makes a rare visit home and their fiery animosity rekindles into a raging inferno. Despite their friends and family's pleas for peace, Christopher is unconvinced Kate would willingly douse the flames of their enmity. But when a drunken Kate confesses she only, she's only been hostile because she thought he hated her, Christopher vows to make peace with Kate once and for all. Tempting as it is to be swept away by her nemesis turned gentleman, Kate isn't sure she can trust his charming good guy act. When Christopher's persistence and Kate's curiosity lead to an impassioned kiss, they realize peace is the last thing they will that will ever be possible between them. As desire gives way to deeper feelings, Kate and Christopher must decide if it's truly better to hate than to never risk their hearts, or if they already gave them away long ago. Well, I'm rooting for these two kids. Holly Jolly Ever After by Julie Murphy. And Sierra Simone. Sorry about that. An actress and a perpetually sing perpetually singer single 
former boy band member are reunited as co-stars on a steamy holiday film in this all new spicy rom-com. Callum Labermanis, the funny one, trademark, as the arguably lesser of the three former members of the boy band Inc. He enjoyed his 15 minutes of fame and then moved home where he opened a regional pizza chain called Slice Slice Baby. He's living his best dad bod life, hooking up with bridesmaids at all his friends' weddings. But after an old one-off sex tape is leaked and quickly goes viral, Callum decides he's ready to step into the spotlight again, starring in a sexy Santa biopic for the Hope Channel. Winnie Baker did everything right. She married her childhood sweetheart, avoided the downfalls of adolescent stardom, and transitioned into a stable adult acting career. Hell, she even waited until marriage to have sex. But after her perfect life falls apart, Winnie is ready to redefine herself. And what better way than a steamier than a steaming hot mug of cider Christmas movie? With decades old Hollywood history between them, Winnie and Callum are both feeling hesitant about their new situation as co-stars, especially Winnie who can't seem to fake an on-screen pleasure she's never experienced in real life. She's willing to do the pleasure research for science and artistic authenticity, of course, but there's no better research partner than her bridesmaid sex tape Hall of Fame co-star Callum. But suddenly Callum's teenage crush on Winnie is bubbling to the surface and Winnie might be catching feelings herself. They say opposites attract, but is this holly jolly ever after really ready for its close-up? I stumbled onto Persuasion on it. Oh, I was so glad I did when I watched Pride and Prejudice, a real Jane Austen evening, really good romances. Persuasion is my favorite, actually, of the books. I love Persuasion. Movies, Pride and Prejudice, Colin Firth, Jennifer Ely. I said it. That's my preference. Uh, the Burnout. But a, an evening with Jane Austen anytime? Yes, absolutely. By Sylvie Kinsella. Well, there's a big name. She can do anything, just not everything. Sasha has had it. She cannot bring herself to respond to another inane, urgent, but obviously not at all urgent, email or participate in the corporate employee joyfulness program. She hasn't seen her friends in months. Sex seems like a lot of effort. Even cooking dinner takes far too much planning. Sasha has hit a wall. Armed with good intentions to drink kale smoothies, try yoga, and find peace, she heads to the seaside resort she loved as a child. But it's the off season. The hotel is in a dilapidated shambles and she has to share the beach with the only other occupant, a grumpy guy named Finn, who seems as stressed as Sasha. How can she commune with nature when he's sitting on her favorite rock watching her? Nor can they agree on how best to alleviate their burnout. Sasha manifesting wild swimming, Finn drinking whiskey, getting pizza delivered to the beach. When curious messages seemingly addressed to Sasha and Finn begin to appear on the beach, the two are forced to talk about everything. How did they get so burned out? Can either of them remember something they used to love? Answer, surfing. And the question they try and fail to ignore, what does the energy between them flaring even in the face of their bone deep exhaustion signify? Morning Kay. I hope you are well too. Thank you. We are looking at romances. Mistletoe and Michigas, Teachers in Love by M.A. Wardell. Sheldon Solskin should have should be having a horrible day. Even though he's been unexpectedly transferred to a new school right before the holidays has only one day to set up his new classroom and just discovered his twin sister's been hiding an invitation to his ex-boyfriend's Christmas Eve wedding, he's still ready to take on the world with a smile on his face and a skip in his step. Theo Berenson just wants to be left alone to his custodial duties. But when the chipper new first grade teacher needs help moving furniture the Sunday after Thanksgiving, he's forced to do something he detests, help. To make matters worse, Theo's overbearing parents are coming for Hanukkah in a few weeks and he's told them he has a boyfriend, except he doesn't, because who would want to date an oaf like Theo? 
Working together, these opposites discover they might be able to help each other out, agreeing to be each other's dates. They become friends as they practice for their upcoming events. But when all the rehearsing starts feeling a little too real and both men's past come roaring back to haunt them, will they be able to pull off the ultimate holiday masquerade? I don't know. I feel like the cover could be better. It's not very inviting. And apparently, yeah, I don't know if you heard Keo. Yeah, so apparently found something outside to bark at. I hope it's not a skunk. Oh, God. That's always my fear. We have them in the area this time of year. Stars in Your Eyes by Case and Calendar. Logan Gray is Hollywood's bad boy, a talented but troubled actor who the public loves to hate. Maddie Cole is an up-and-coming golden boy, adored by all but plagued by insecurities. When Logan and Maddie are cast as leads in a new romantic film, Logan claims that Matt has zero talent, sending the film's publicity into a nose nosedive. To create positive buzz, the two are persuaded into a fake dating scheme, but as the two actors get to know their new characters, their feelings start to develop. As public scrutiny intensifies and old wounds surface, the two must fight for their relationship and their love. I think I mentioned yesterday, there's a whole lot of celebrities slash movies themed books out lately. I'm Your Guy by Serena Bowen. Second in series, The Hockey Guys. The furniture district is my personal hell. I don't know my ass from an ottoman, but when a hot designer comes to my rescue, I realize my problems are bigger than the house I'm trying to furnish. A scorching kiss over fabric samples makes me question all my choices, but is it too late to change my entire life to get more of them? Carter, I need this gig, but my cocky new client leaves out a couple of crucial details. He doesn't mention that he's a famous hockey player. Are there... And he doesn't own up to the way he's always trying to undress me with his dark, broody eyes. The man throws out more mixed signals than a broken traffic light. I've never been more sexually frustrated in my entire life. I need to back away before I do something stupid like lose my heart. Oops, too late. I don't think I'm in the right frame of mind for romances. I'm feeling very snarky today. <laughs> I'm sorry. All right. All mixed up. A second chance romance. I do like second chances. This is eighth in a series. Hi, I'm all. Good morning. And good morning to Keo. Yeah, he's actually awake, which is kind of surprising because he's not a morning kind of dog. All mixed up. Heidi Hutchinson. Nikki has a lot going on at the moment. She's the best sound engineer and mixer at XY Records. She's working on a super secret project with a pop megastar and holding the busier than usual studio together. The last thing she wants or needs is her ex-fiance to start working in the studio over the summer. She's over it. Him, obviously. Being ghosted has that effect, but working near someone she used to love has made her life that much more complicated. Andre has it all figured out. Two and a half years ago, he had no idea what he was doing when he walked away from the love of his life. The time has given him perspective and he's grown up, which is why the paleontology professor is working part-time at his ex's recording studio <clears throat> Excuse me, because he wants to make amends and maybe win her back. Will Nikki give him the chance he thinks he's ready for? Or will it be her turn to walk away from him? The Problem with Dating by Brittany Cherry. This is a Kindle Unlimited. If I had to choose a person to hate, Alex Ramirez would have been first on the list. Welcome to Honey Creek, Illinois, where life was as sweet as the town's name suggested. That was until Mr. Fine Dining himself, Alex Ramirez, rolled into town with a permanent scowl. Even worse, he decided to park his snooty five-star restaurant across from my cozy dog daycare. He was tall, dark, and about as warm as a frozen entree. After one too many unpleasant interactions, I was determined to stay out of his way and to keep him out of mine. 
the fate had a quirky sense of humor. When Alex inherited his great aunt's cranky canine, he had no, no choice but to come to me, the local dog whisperer, for help. As for me, I needed a fake boyfriend to ward off my ex-husband, who was determined to win me back. So we struck a deal. He turned his dog into the town's best behaved pet, and in return, he'd be my arm candy for a few family events and social gatherings. Simple, uncomplicated, and absolutely not romantic. At least that's what we told ourselves. As we played house, I couldn't help but notice that underneath Alex's prickly shell was a dash of charm that wasn't listed in the ingredients. Our pretend date started to feel a little too real, and our feigned kisses... They were getting laughably close to crossing the line. Suddenly, our interactions felt less like a food fight and more like foreplay. With every playful touch and lingering glance, I couldn't help but wonder, was this fake relationship with Alex secretly pending its own authentic ending? Or was I whisk risking it all for someone who was nothing more than make-believe? Happy Wednesday. Yeah, maybe I'm a little snarky. <laughs> I've seen a lot of Serena Bowen and she's good. Oh, good. Alex feels, yeah. Ugh. Maybe more coffee is required. Hopeless. Elsie Silver. Now I have read Elsie Silver. Are we sure this came out today? It did. This is book five in the Chestnut Springs. This one's a very, very, very popular series. I have read the first two. I, read, I liked the first one. Second one was kind of more meh for me. Um, would help if you guys could see which one I'm talking about. Hopeless, oh, Elsie Silver. Bo Eaton is the town prince, a handsome military hero with a tortured past. I'm the outside bartender, a shy girl from the wrong side of the tracks. He's 35 and all man, and I'm 22 and all virgin. He's also my fiance, correction, my fake fiance. We start out as a bet. He doesn't believe that anyone holds my last name against me, so he offers me his to prove a point. It's a win-win. He gets a break from his concerned family's prying, and I get a chance to shed my family's reputation while I save up to ditch this small town. He says all I have to do is wear his ring, follow his lead, and pretend I can't keep my hands off of him in public. But it's what happens between us in private that blurs all those carefully drawn lines. It's what transpires behind closed doors that doesn't feel like pretending at all. This engagement was supposed to be for show. This agreement, it has an end date. He once told me he'd never fall in love. And yet here I am, head over heels for my fake fiance. I do like the covers. Better than those cartoon ones. Or the faceless ones. Uh, one more. These, these say these couple of these are coming out on Friday. So that's still this week. The Pact by Suzanne Wright. She should say no. Addison Davenport figures that most people likely would. But after having her life plans repeatedly derailed, oh, I'm sorry, guys, forgot to share that one. Um, she's come to wonder if her chance at marriage and kids ended with the death of her college boyfriend. So in business powerhouse Daxton Dax Mercier, a man who suffered a similar loss, a man who's her first in every way, asks her to honor the fallback marriage pact they made years ago. She doesn't reject it out of hand. Their partnership would be no more than a business transaction, but what's the point in holding out for love when it had granted her no guarantees in the past? Maybe they could make a marriage work. Maybe. One thing is for certain, with the wounds of loss heavy on their souls and the fact that he's given up on finding the big L again, friendship would be all they'd have. Love would never enter their picture, ever. Not for a moment, right? And I'm saying perhaps I'm snarky because I'm absolutely sure the perspective is different for somebody who is in their 20s or 30s. It's just perspective, I guess. Okay. This one looks more 
that to see. So we'll look at that one tomorrow. Let's go to this one. These are saying they come out this week. Dear Stranger. Third in the Paper Cuts series by Winter Renshaw. Online lovers, offline rivals. It's a Kindle Unlimited. Ambitious and career-driven, I have zero time for dating until blind love and app design for those seeking genuine romantic connections without the hassle of awkward first dates hooks me in. The only catch, 90 days of anonymous messaging are required before our identities are revealed. I connect with Stranger88 immediately, and before long, our flirty banter becomes a welcome escape from my demanding schedule. Soon I'm desperate to know his true identity, so I go digging, only discover that Stranger88 is no stranger at all. In a cruel twist of fate, it turns out the mystery man consuming my every thought is fellow attorney Brooks Abbott, a sharp-tongued devil in a three-piece suit, my biggest office rival. Oh, God. I'm so sorry, guys. I keep forgetting this. Um, and the one obstacle standing between me and the promotion of my dreams, a job Brooks has every intention of landing. Behind the screens, there's no de denying our electric chemistry, but at work, our rivalry grows stronger than ever. But when passion meets profession, will we redefine the law of attraction or will our hearts face a ruthless cross-examination with no chance of appeal? Authors note, this is a standalone romance. You do not need to read the other two books. Billionaire Rake by Misha Bell. Ah, shared it. He is a billionaire, of course, and a rake. Yes, I know it's not the 1800s. I'm just a bit obsessed with historical romance, that's all, and books in general, which is why I'm on my way to interview for my dream job at the library when Adrian Westfield's sheep-like hound knocks me over and into the mud. So I'm late, dirty, and completely flub my interview, only to get the offer of my life. To win custody of his baby daughter, Adrian Westfield wants to make me his fake wife. Someday, they're going to come up with new tropes. Again, I'm sorry, I'm being snarky. <laughs> Does not bode well for the day. It could be a lack of coffee. Coffee will be required today. All right. So, we're out of time. I got to go run some errands before I go to work. I have to get the mail, pick up some groceries, etc., etc. I hope you guys have a very good Wednesday. And then this afternoon, I got to take Keo to the vet. He's got some eye issues going on. So, it's going to be a busy day. And we have a new salesperson starting. So, there'll be some training and stuff like that. And we have a truck. So much to do today. Uh, but in between all that stuff, there will be reading and crocheting and so forth. Uh, but remember, we don't have any uh, sprints on my channel tonight. They, If you follow, the ones that I follow uh, have one tonight at, on Sarah's channel, The Bookish Knitter. And she starts at uh, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Thanks for the info. You betcha. Uh, so, but tomorrow night we'll have them at uh, 6.05 Mountain Time, 8.05 Eastern. And uh, tomorrow we'll be here same time in the morning and we'll be looking at fantasy and science fiction. And uh, usually there's not a whole lot compared to the other genres. So we'll probably be looking at some more cozy mysteries. I hope you have a very good day. Be safe, be happy, take care of yourself because you deserve it. And uh, remember, as the banner says, don't be a bookworm, be a bookie monster. Om nom nom nom. God bless. <laughs>